Well, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 4. Listen to what the Word of God says. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Thus is the reading of God's holy word. It has been tried, it can be trusted, and it is already blessed. Just for a little while this evening, we'd like to teach on the subject, facts, faith, and feelings. Facts, faith, and feelings. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you and praising you, God, for just another day, another opportunity to study your word. We thank you right now for all of your many blessings, for keeping us safe and in your care. And we just pray, Lord God, that your will will continually be done in all of our lives. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Fakes, facts, faith, and feelings. Have anyone ever wondered as a believer how your feelings are so changeable? So many people nowadays are in their feelings and they let their feelings control them. Have you ever wondered what you could do about your feelings? Well, these are questions that all of us may have at some time or another, and this evening, we're gonna to try to answer some of these questions. Yes, we want to learn one of the most important principles in the Christian life, and it's called the principle of facts, faith, and feelings. Yes, these three words, they stand for three aspects of the Christian life. And they are very important to all of us. And, and it's also important for us to understand them and understand how they work. But most importantly, we need to understand how to get them in the right order and to keep them in the right order if we're going to live a victorious Christian life. So God, he's a God of order. And when we look at facts, faith, and feelings, we need to understand the order that God puts them in. And this is God's order. Number one is facts. Number two is faith. And number three is feelings. Now, now facts, they form the foundation. Faith rests upon the facts, and then feelings, they come last. However, for most people, feelings are the guiding factor in their lives, because if they feel that something is right, it's not right. If they feel something is real, they think it's real. So many people are led by their feelings. They're not led by the Spirit of God. But, but this isn't the order of God. Now, now others may try to put faith first, but, but, but this isn't God's order either. Yes, so many believers feel that if they could just muster up enough faith that they can make their prayers come to pass faster than God's plan. They, they feel like, I, I got to have faith, I got to have faith. If I got faith, anything can come true. 
But the truth of the matter is that faith, faith, it must rest on God's word. If faith is not resting on God's word, then faith has no value. In other words, it's not true biblical faith. You see, God's order is always the same. It's, it's facts, faith, and feelings. And so this evening, let's just look at each one of these three aspects of God, uh, God's order and the Christian life so that we can understand how they work and how they affect our lives. So first of all, number one, we said the facts. What is a fact? Well, a fact is something that is true. For example, two plus two equals four, and that's a mathematical fact. It's always been true. It will always remain true. As a matter of fact, it's true in America, it's true. In Canada, it's true anywhere in this world. Now, your believing, it doesn't make it true. Because if no one believed it, it would still be true. And we need to understand and get certain things fixed in our minds. You see, facts are always true. You may not believe all the facts, but yet it's still true. You may not even feel like the fact is the truth, but it is still true. For example, we know that Jesus Christ, he, he died for our sins and he rose again on the third day to become our living Savior. And we know this is true because God's word says so. Now a person may or may not believe this, but yet, guess what? It's still true. Therefore, God's facts are always true. Amen? Somebody just type that. Facts are always true. It's a matter of fact. And then secondly, let's look at faith. What is faith? Now, the word faith is used in the Bible 239 times. And this should show us the importance that God places on faith. But what is biblical faith? Well, first of all, faith is taking God at his word and acting upon it. Yes. For example, if God said it, we must believe it, and that should settle it. Therefore, we must obey it and put it in action. And whether you know it or not, the Bible makes it very clear that all of the blessings of God, they come to us by faith. Amen? And without faith, the Bible says, it's even impossible to please God. Yeah, that's what it says in Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as, as important as faith is, faith cannot stand alone. No, faith, it must rest upon something and that something must be something that is true. That's why our faith must always rest upon the word of God. See, Jesus said in John 17 and 17, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. When we talk about truth here, we're talking about absolute truth. Amen? The inerrant truth. No errors in it. Nothing wrong with it. So with that in mind, let's just look into God's word and talk a little bit more about faith. Well, faith, first of all, it deals with the unseen world. But also faith deals with things that are also seen. Yes, some are, 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 are not seen, they're real, but they're unseen. And faith it also deals with things that are seen. It becomes the evidence. For example, we cannot see God. 
But by faith, we know that God is there. We know that he's real. We know that he, he hears and he answers prayer. For example, we cannot see heaven. But by faith, we know that heaven is a real place. We know there's a place called heaven. And that's a place we all want to go someday. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1 that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, this means that faith is the way that we prove the reality of things that we cannot see. So once again, we can't see things in the spirit world, but we know that they are there, that they are real by faith in God's word. Therefore, faith, it makes spiritual truths real in our experience. Now, now don't get me wrong. See, our, our faith doesn't make God's facts true. Mm. Our faith does not make God's word true. They are true whether we believe in them or not. Then what does our faith do? Well, listen to this. Our faith in God's facts, it makes them real to us. Amen. And faith begins to manifest the written word into the natural. Faith can pull the, the spiritual into the natural, the supernatural into the natural. Faith is what causes manifestation of God's word to take place in our lives. You see, the Bible contains so many wonderful promises of God, but they don't just become ours until we claim them and make them ours by believing God and taking him at his word. For example, God says you're healed. You, you have to come into a realization that if he speaks healing over my life, regardless of what I feel, what it looks like in the natural, I receive it, believe it by faith. And God manifests the healing. Just like we said before, it's a great fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins and God promises eternal life to everyone who believes in him. But Christ does not become your savior until you exercise faith in him. Therefore, when you believe in Jesus Christ that he died for your sins and you ask him to come into your heart and you take him as your personal savior, then and only then do you experience salvation. So faith in Christ makes salvation your real experience. And that's the only reason that you can say, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Yes, you must confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And guess what? You shall be saved. Now faith, faith, listen, faith also believes God's word. That's what faith does. Faith believes in God despite of unfavorable circumstances. And perhaps one of the best examples of this is the life of Abraham. You know the story. Yes, when Abraham and his wife Sarah were old, God promised them that they would have a son. And Abraham, he believed God. And God accounted it unto him as righteousness. Guess what? Fifteen years passed. And God's promise had not been fulfilled. And humanly speaking, it was impossible for Abraham and Sarah to have a son anyway. Mm. Yet, yet Abraham, he did not stagger. The Bible says he did not even waver at the promise of God. He just continued to believe God. And in due time, God gave him the son that he had promised to him. Look at Romans, Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21. This is talking about Abraham. Romans chapter 4, when you get time, just write the scripture down. Verses 20 and 21, it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded 
that he, what he had promised unto him, he was also able to perform. Now faith, it, it believes God's word. It believes in God. But listen, I can take it a step further. So not only does faith believe God, but faith also obeys God. Amen. It obeys God. Yes, faith and obedience, actually it goes together. Therefore, true faith always results in obedience. Therefore, believers are obeyers. Yes. Back in, in, in Hebrews 11 and 8, listen to what it says. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out. So, to say that you believe in something, but you do not act upon it, that's not true biblical faith. No, true faith believes God and obeys God. Faith that does not obey God is not living faith. That's why James says in James 2 and 20, he says that faith without works is dead. So therefore, there has to be some type of corresponding action if it's true. True biblical faith, so faith and, and obedience, it, it goes hand in hand. But so many believers, they pray and ask for more faith. They pray and ask for more strength in the Lord. Well, how can a believer increase their faith? I'm glad you asked on this evening. Because it's easy to say, I would like to have more faith. But what can a believer really do to increase their faith? Well, listen to me. Faith grows by constant, careful attention to God's exact statements of facts in his word. When you really continue in his word, faith comes. Now, there was a great man of God by the name of D.L. Moody. In one of his books, he wrote that he prayed and he prayed and he prayed for God to give him more faith. But yet his faith did not seem to increase. Then one day he just read this particular verse in the Bible out of Romans 10 and 17. And it said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in a flash, Moody, he saw it. He realized that faith comes from the word of God. So he began to study God's word. And he studied it carefully and he read it every day to see exactly what God was saying in his word. Then he began to believe that word. And then he began to apply that word to his life. And all of a sudden, the result was that his faith it grew and grew and it kept on growing. A lot of folks go to Sunday school and they say, well, yeah, I heard that story before. I heard that scripture before. They go to church, I heard that sermon before. I heard that song before. Well, the Bible doesn't say that faith cometh by having heard, having heard before. No, faith doesn't come by having heard. Amen. It comes by hearing. It doesn't come from your past experience. Faith is always present. It's in present tense. Presence tense. So therefore, faith is the substance. It is. It is. And faith comes from hearing. And this is really perpetual. In other words, it's over and over. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes from hearing and, and hearing and, and hearing and hearing. So we have to continue to hear from God. And how do we hear from God? Through his word. It's through his word. We're talking about facts, faith, and feelings. You just type facts, faith, and feelings. Well, my brothers and sisters, we've looked at facts, we've looked at faith, then third and finally, we're through on this evening. Let's talk a little about, about feelings. What are feelings? Well, feelings are emotions such as joy, sorrow, 
happiness, sadness, and we must understand that feelings are quite different from facts. If in that if facts, because facts never change, but yet feelings always or they constantly change. Even the state of our health can affect our feelings. Our relationships with other people can affect our feelings. Sometimes even change in the weather can affect our feelings. Amen? Somebody can make you mad. It can start raining. You say, oh, darn, I forget. Ah, you get upset because you had plans. And now your plans may have changed because of something. And your attitude or your feelings changed. For example, one day you can be full of joy. And then on the next day, for no apparent reason, you may be sad and depressed. So the important thing right here is to remember about our feelings is that feelings are very changeable. They are not constant. And for this reason, we should never try to rest our faith on our feelings. Many times in church, a lot of members ago, and you can ask them, how was church? Ooh, it was good. We had some good church. Ooh, the choir song. Ooh, the spirit was there. Hallelujah. I cried. I praised. I just asked, well, what, what did the preacher talk about? Uh, can't tell you nothing about what was said in the word. They could only speak to feelings. Could even recite the title of the message. So therefore, we have to become active listeners. The story about one day a Christian lady was using the Bible to explain the way of salvation to a young girl. But the girl was confused. She said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but I thought I had to wait for a certain kind of feeling or some burst of light of something before I'm really saved. But the lady pointed to some verses in God's word and said, here's all the light that you need. The girl then put her faith in the word of God and then she found the peace and the joy she had been seeking. You see, a lot of folks are seeking feelings. They want to feel good gospel. They want to be a feel-good Christian. If, it, if, if it's not entertaining me, if it's not bringing me uh, that pleasure, then I don't want to hear it. But that's not the true gospel. No matter how much our feelings may change, feelings cannot affect facts. Facts is the truth. Remember I said facts are always true. And they are true regardless of our feelings. Amen? Many sincere people, they seek for salvation, but they don't find what they're looking for because they are looking for some kind of feeling. And of course, don't get, don't get me wrong on this either because feelings do have a place in the Christian life, but they never come first. Remember God? He has an order. He's a God of order. Feelings, they must follow facts and they must follow faith. Then you can shout. Because if you shout about something that's not pertaining to the true word of God, that's an in vain shout. Amen? Amen. That, that's not the kind of shout that's going to bring blessings down. We shout because God has shown us something in his word. We shout because God has increased our faith and I see him in a, such a different way. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, it says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not of God had made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. Now listen to this. First, we have to believe. And then we have that inner witness of the spirit that comes into our heart. So therefore, once we believe, the Holy Spirit comes in. And that's what moves us. He's our helper. He's our comforter. We got that feeling now on the inside. 
but it only came from the facts, from the truth of God's word. So how do we as believers handle our feelings? Well, there are times in all of our lives when we feel depressed, disappointed, discouraged. Even the Apostle Paul, he went through times like these where his feelings were up and down. Second Corinthians 1 and 8, he says, For we were not brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us while we were in Asia. He says that we were pressed out of measure. I mean, in other words, my goodness, we were, we, was really, we were really distraught or disturbed beyond measure, above strength, in so much that we despair even life. You know, some believers, they pray God and say, I'm just, it's enough. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Elijah prayed to God in, in, in 1 Kings, and he prayed and asked God to just take his life. He said, it's enough. He said, just, just take me now. He was going through feelings. So what should we do when we feel this way, when we're in our feelings, when we become discouraged? Well, the main thing to do is to turn your attention back to God's word. Read and meditate on God's word. Meditate on passages such as Psalm 23. You should know that one. By heart, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You should know that one. Meditate on Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Uh, meditate on Philippians 4, 4 and 13. I believe it says, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you give careful attention to what God says in his word, you will find new faith and new courage springing up in your heart. Mm -hmm. Even Romans 15 and 13 says, Now the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Yes, in believing him. So that you may abound in hope. Amen. Overflowing hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, in closing, in living this Christian life, we are, should not be overly concerned with our feelings. But so many times we say, you hurt me, you hurt my feelings, you made me mad, I'm angry, amen? Which there's nothing wrong with the Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. But, but don't put feelings first. You see why? Because we are not saved by our feelings, nor can we live this Christian life based upon feelings. No, we live it by faith in God's word. And whenever we have enjoyable feelings, we need to just thank God and praise God. But, but even if our feelings are not enjoyable, even if we're going through moments of despair, moments of sadness, moments of pain and grief, we must continue to believe what God says in his word, and we must continue to obey his word. Amen? Amen. That's what you mean. It means I, I will yet believe. I will give him a yet praise, even though what I'm going through, I'm not going to be moved by this. So faith in God's facts is really the way to be blessed, a way to be an overcomer, a way to be more than conquerors. So always put your faith in God's facts and let your feelings come along as they will. God's promise. That's my fact. I believe it. That's my faith. God fulfills it. <laughs> That's my feeling when God brings it to pass. So let's keep first things first. And let's keep things in proper order. Well, my time is up, y'all, and I thank God for yours. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. I thought it was a little short lesson on tonight, but it, it, it went on in, didn't it? Amen, amen.